My name is Paul Baker. I'm a Deputy Postgraduate Dean at Health Education England, uh, working across the northwest of England. I also have a role in academic foundation programs nationally, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that today. Thank you for your attention. So, um, first slide. Uh, I'm going to split this talk into two sections. Uh, firstly, I'll say a little bit about what academic foundation programs actually are, uh, some background, and secondly, I'll tell you something about how to apply. What I will say repeatedly is that uh, academic foundation uh, and all its processes are subject to change. Uh, that happens year on year in any case, things evolve, things improve. Um, even without COVID, things can change and timelines can alter. So the uh, uh, overarching rule here is to always check with the foundation program website. Okay, that's the website uh, that you should always use. There are two other sources of information which I want to point you towards. One is the Rough Guide to Foundation uh, Academic Training, also to be found on that website. It gives you lots of background information and opinions from uh, previous trainees and, and other sources, very valuable information. And throughout this, I'll be reminding you that there are variations between foundation schools across the UK. That's not just across England, but across the whole of the United Kingdom. And you must check with the individual school for uh, individual information at every point. Now, the main value of this uh, uh, conference uh, here today is that you've got a very good panel to interact with. And I've highlighted three questions which often uh, are raised with myself. I want you to consider these, and if you have a spare moment during the slideshow, uh, please type your thoughts into the chat box. Uh, who is this? How is he relevant? Well, you may remember this, this guy from uh, a Bond movie, um, Tomorrow Never Dies, and his, his overriding advice was, uh, was about careers, good, conveniently enough, and it, he said that his first boss uh, taught him uh, that the secret to a good story is not the, the what, the where, the who or the how, but it's the why. So I'm asking you, you're tuning in today, why are you interested in academic foundation careers? I want you to uh, write your thoughts as to what really is motivating you, because that's the key to, to the whole process. I'm oft, also often asked, is academic foundation the only route into academia? So give me your thoughts on that. And another consideration is, uh, if doing academic foundation, do you have to do all the same things that other uh, non-academic foundation trainees have to do? Uh, give me your thoughts on those whilst I'm speaking. So what is academic foundation training? Um, it is approximately 1 20th of the whole program uh, and there are about um, seven and a half thousand uh, foundation places uh, nationally and over 500 of those are academic foundation uh, so as i say in any one school there should be at least one in 20 and we generally uh, exceed that target in the uk Again, I will repeat, many aspects of academic foundation are school specific. So please do your local research uh, before uh, deciding. And academic uh, foundation allows you to um, delve into the worlds of research, education, that includes education research, leadership, and there is scope for other special experience type of posts, such as quality improvement. Uh, that is not an exhaustive list. So the program allows you to develop interests and also get the support, uh, the contacts, uh, the networking, the information you'll need during and in addition to your first two-year uh, clinical training. 
so flexibility is uh, built into the academic foundation program uh, and has been right from the beginning what must an academic foundation program deliver well it has to deliver the normal foundation competencies so the same competencies anybody else uh, has to get in foundation training uh, have to be delivered during found uh, academic foundation training as well now afp as we call it can be one of an organized step in the integrated academic training pathway by which i mean you could be an academically minded student you do an academic foundation training post and then you uh, naturally succeed into a um, academic clinical lecturer post and, and the academic pathway there on after it does fulfill that role however it can also fulfill the role of uh, those just wanting to dip a toe into an academic career so you may not be totally decided you may want to see what academic work is like and academic foundation can um, fulfill that as well uh, if you are very very advanced as a medical student into the academic sphere for instance we do see applicants with uh, phds or other uh, higher degrees maybe you don't need academic foundation so don't don't think that's automatic but once again this is very site specific and school specific so please do your homework um, look for different models of academic foundation uh, because there is variability uh, usually it's a four month block taken in fy2 but there are other models such as a half a day throughout the two-year course again do your local research um, look for the right location for you and geography is is uh, often the overriding concern for many trainees look at what track models they have there as i've just described in particular look for the amount of dedicated time you get from uh, ordinary work related to academia and this can vary from none uh, uh, no no added time at all simply doing work in your spare time to as i've just said four months off or two months um, uh, sorry four months in the uh, uh, fy2 year or half a day throughout the two years so look at the time that's been allocated uh, look for what input there is from your local medical school or a higher education institute you may for instance get a, an honorary contract with them that may give you other added value such as access to high t access to networks so a lot of this is about networking and contacts for future progression uh, look to see if your interests can be uh, maintained in that post and look at the track record of that uh, that that placement whether it be for presentations publications uh, allowing you to present at conferences and so on you may also wish to uh, look at, at further postgraduate qualifications whether you want to be uh, a teacher what specialty uh, you wish to go in is important and look at the specialty societies uh, and again what access there is to to their specialty conferences publications and so on uh, there are two things to to consider as well as being an academic but also being a medical specialist um, it should be part of an overall career plan uh, and do think about where you want to be next where you want to be in five or ten years or longer and work backwards from that and we've already spoken about uh, specialty or GP training uh, there is an integrated academic training pathway but I would warn you that this is uh, specific to the four countries in the United Kingdom so although England is 85% of, of the population and you've heard of NIHR uh, the academic uh, institution that is England only, uh, only and if you if you are in Northern Ireland, Wales or Scotland, there are separate systems for that and the reference I will give you for that is once again the rough guide to academic foundation training to be found on the UK FPO foundation website. So the second section of the presentation is 
about applying for academic foundation in the United Kingdom. And again, the health warning is there that things are subject to change. They're subject to change even more in a, an era of COVID. And uh, you must always check with three sources of information uh, before making final decisions. Uh, the main source is the UK FPO website. That's the UK Foundation Programme Office. Website is there on the slide. Um, there's a rough guide to academic foundation, which is to be found on that website, which has a lot of useful information. And uh, be sure to look at the information for each specific school because we, uh, we know that it can vary. Once again, the main value of this conference is that you can interact with the panel. So once again, I'm asking you to put in three questions about the application to AFP into the chat box and I'll address those whilst uh, we're talking. There will be uh, opportunity for further questions at the end. So why is this guy relevant? He's not a Bond villain. Uh, some of you may know that it's uh, Steve Jobs and uh, he was the founder of uh, the Apple uh, phenomenon that we all know. And um, he can be a divisive figure to some, but uh, he certainly achieved uh, a lot of things. And what did he say? He said, I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, he, he gave a very, uh, by now famous uh, valedictory speech at, uh, at uh, an American educational institution. And to paraphrase, he said, find the job you love and do that. Those weren't his exact words. I think there's another saying such uh, that, that, that goes something like, if you find the job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So this is all about career choices and making uh, something that uh, you're interested in uh, really count for that. Three questions then. If I do academic foundation, will I get less clinical experience? commonly asked. Uh, is there a master's qualification? What, what, what is the scope for that? And what are units of application? That's a vital piece of understanding if you're going to apply for academic foundation. So um, the appointment system is known as Aureal. That's the IT platform for the uh, foundation applications. Uh, all the information is on the website and to uh, be looking for AFP placements. Firstly, sounds obvious, you must have the correct provisional GMC re registration, uh, as does any, any newly qualified doctor in the UK, and apply for the foundation program first, and, and then you consider the foundation option. So register on Oriel. Uh, there are what we call two units of application, and you'll need to know which ones you're applying to. Um, you can apply to only two and for all the programs in those two units of application, those geographical groupings, uh, you may be asked to rank all the programs uh, in AFP that are available. Uh, so be prepared to do that and, and to stop your ranking at a point where you're no longer maybe interested in those, uh, in those placements and we, we can discuss that later. Again, very school specific. There are almost as many variations of the appl application process as there are schools, but you will all have to go through the first two steps that I've just mentioned there. That is get registered, apply for UK Academic Foundation training. Uh, this is the timeline and it's correct at the time of speaking. Hopefully it won't have to change because of any uh, pandemic or other uh, considerations, but uh, that is the timeline. So very soon, uh, Oriel will open, uh, the dates are there, and there is a window uh, during which you can apply. And um, the um, academic recruitment can be in stages, again, depending on, on the school and how, how large the school is, how sought after the school is. There will be different competition ratios, and you will all have to go through some sort of uh, long or short listing uh, and interview. So uh, that's the preference for nearly all academic schools. Uh, they are likely to uh, want a, an interview 
which uh, in 2021 will be more than likely online. Again, do your homework, do your local research. Uh, you will all have to do the situational judgment test, which is the uh, route into foundation training in the UK. Again, it's a digital platform run by an organization called Pearson View. Uh, you are able to book a slot in a uh, date, a time and locations throughout uh, the UK. Um, that will be on a first come first serve basis. So please don't leave everything to the last minute or you may not be able to get the slot you want. And applications generally, please don't leave, uh, leave till the last minute. Uh, on the last day of applications at noon, uh, that's the time the applications close. We're very often looking in the last hour to see people still uh, not finishing their applications. And that, that's very risky. IT can fail, things can go wrong. So please don't leave it till the last minute. Uh, I'm often asked, can you withdraw from applications? Well, you can, but withdrawing before an offer is very much more easy than withdrawing after an offer. So please look at the website, look at the guidance for Academic Foundation and um, make sure you're aware of the rules before, before doing that. By and large, the rule is if you apply before an offer has been accepted, uh, you will go forward to the normal, uh, the normal foundation application process. Afterwards is uh, much, much more difficult and we don't suggest that you do that. So again, please check the website. And offers will be, we start to uh, be given in uh, the middle of January and it should all be done and dusted by, by the 11th of February. Hi, so my name is Zaid, I am an F1 in West London and I just completed the Medics Academy training and teaching day three course. I think it's structured in a really nice way with a lot of resources, you can permanently access, the course isn't over after three days, you've got a ton of online content that you can always revisit and I think that is fantastic. I thought it was a great way to learn through having a full day at the start and then two later days of self-study. It really allowed for flexibility and allowed us to fully engage in the course. It also made me feel better uh, prepared to deliver teaching remotely or digitally. It's really interactive. There's a lot of small group uh, feedback session, exchanging ideas uh, and learning people's perspective. After actually doing this course, I realised that teaching is more of a science and it's really important to get clear feedback so that you can improve your teaching. This course also encouraged me to think thoroughly about what my audience actually wants from my teaching session and also how I can keep them um, better engaged. Really great and fantastic to get such fantastic lectures from experts in the field throughout the three days. It was also interesting to learn from others taking part in the course because we all have different levels of experience so it was interesting to gain their perspective on things too. I learned not just about a different style of teaching, um, I also learned about uh, what is medical education, how to build a career in medical education. Overall I learned a lot from the teaching course. I think it's a really well done course. I really enjoyed it. Very enjoyable. That's what I thought of the whole course and I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it to other people. So thank you for letting me participate.